In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the one who leads us through the wilderness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
As I was uh, going over our readings today, I was really drawn to Elijah's story. I've known that story for a long time. And today, as I was reading over the readings again this morning, he hit me again. Elijah has had a really tough time with things. As one of the prophets, one of the major prophets, he's not really had a really good adventure with God, but yet he's still faithful. And in his last few days here, what he thinks is going to be his last few days, he says, God, I am no better. I have not succeeded. I'm going to lay down and die. And instead of letting that happen, what the Lord does, he feeds him. He gives him food to sustain him in his journey. That he may continue in his mission that God sent him out on. He sustains him with the bread from heaven that's brought down by an angel. I don't know about you, but in my life, I'll never not be a part of cake and jug of water. But if that's what it takes, that's what God provides. God gives Elijah what he needs. And as you hear in the story, Elijah's just distraught. I'm done. But after being fed twice by the Lord, he says, okay, I get it. I have the strength provided, not by myself, but by you, Lord, to go and continue through the struggle of life that I have to go through. So let me ask you, like Elijah, if you were to know that tomorrow was your dying day, what would your last meal be? What would you ask for? Would it be comfort food or would it be something else? I'd like to share with you a story about the last meal that I was able to witness that changed my life in ways I'll never forget. A number of years ago, I was visiting one of our nursing homes, and I had been told that there was a new woman there, and that she was very frail, and they asked me to stop in and see her. And as I stopped in, I was walking into a room, and the nursing staff was there working with her. I really don't know what they were doing, but they were working with her. And she was totally unresponsive. But even though I had been told that she was very wrong, I was not really prepared for what I saw. I could count the woman quite literally. She looked like a skeleton. She clearly did not be able to eat with any nourishment for quite some time. So I could see all the bones in her arms and her knees. Her face was very, very thin. And she was laying in the bed, totally unresponsive. So after the nurses finished up, I went and I thought, well, I'll just pray over her for a little bit and then I'll be on the way. So I prayed some prayers, and then as I began, I, I finished with the Lord's Prayer. And as I was praying the Lord's Prayer, suddenly I saw her mouth moving. And I could hear her trying with some of her very sweet breath to pray the Lord's Prayer with me. And it was a beautiful thing, but I could swear that I could hear also some verbal breath, which is usually a sign that death is near. So as we prayed the Lord's Prayer with her, I then said, well, I know she can hear me. I asked, would you like to have and I could see her. She couldn't answer me with her voice. But with the last bit of strength that she had, she tried to sit up in bed. I tried to tell her that she didn't need to sit up, but she didn't have any part of that. She wanted to try to sit up. She was only able to scooch up just a couple of inches, really not in the sitting position. It was clear she wanted to be in a position to receive the Lord's word. So I gave her a very thin piece of music, and she lay back down, and once again, fell into kind of a sleeping state where she couldn't respond to anything. Now, a couple days later, I think I had heard that she passed away, and sure enough, I did not see her the next time I went to visit her. I don't remember her name when she left the market, because I remember that, that, that with her very last strength, she wanted the Lord Jesus with all of her strength. And she was willing to give everything she had to have that. That was a beautiful last thing. So I was thinking, what was your last thing? I gave her that small piece thinking, I hope that she understands what she's receiving. And she showed me that she really did. So, like Elijah, she needed food to help sustain her in her last hours and her last days. And that's what she received. She didn't receive just a mere piece of bread. She received the bread of life that sustained her in her struggles as she finished out her life on this earth. So, in today's gospel, Jesus tells us that he is the living bread that came down from heaven. That living bread is for our journey through everyday life here as we struggle with the things that we run into every day. Now, the Jews in the story, when he used the words bread from heaven, they would have known exactly what he was talking about. You see, as we've heard, he talks to them about the manna they received. That's a story that would have been very well known. Hundreds of years before Jesus came down and walked on earth, the Lord had 
had saved the Israelites from starvation. He pulled them out of slavery, led them around as they wandered in the, in the, in the wilderness before they entered into the promised land. And what did he do with them every day? He fed them manna. He gave them food from heaven so that they would learn that they could trust him with everything that they needed. It didn't stop them from complaining. It didn't stop them from wondering if he was really going to take care of them. But every day he fed them manna. Bread from heaven. And that was a temporary bread. It only lasted a day, the next day it rotted. But somehow, over those 40 years of wandering the desert, the Lord kept reminding them every single day, I am going to provide you your daily bread. The same daily bread that we pray for in our Father prayer. Give us our daily bread. <coughs> God is telling us through that man that He will sustain us. And Jesus is that bread of life. He is not the bread that goes bad after a day. He's the bread that gives us life. We wander in the desert every day too. We still have struggles. We murmur against God. We wonder if He's got our back. We wonder if He's taking care of us. But yet, every day, somehow, He provides what we need so that we too can make it through these journeys in the wilderness of our everyday lives. Jesus is that living bread. Greater than any man that came down from heaven, greater than the miraculous eating for 40 years, he miraculously feeds us. And he provides for us because he loves us. So the Jews recognize that story, but they don't necessarily recognize him. They had just seen all kinds of miracles, and yet they still question, well, who is this guy in the mind? We may see all kinds of wonders that God has worked for us or our friends and family. We may look into the face of a small child and realize the miracle of life. We may see other ways that God has blessed us. But yet sometimes, because of our community, we still fall into sin. And we still say, do I really trust you, God? Do I really trust that you've got the best interest? Do I really trust that you're going to be with me? Now that bread, the bread of the manna, sustained them until they got into the promised land, a physical place. The bread of life that Jesus gives us sustains us until we see the ultimate place to be with him forever in heaven. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of John that the Father has prepared many rooms for us. And that this is the bread that will sustain us until we can get into the new promised land, greater than any promised land that was given to Abraham and our forefathers. So, but we, in order to accept that invitation, remember, a lot of people don't. But for those of us who do, how do we do that? We do it through belief. Jesus says those who believe in him will accept his bread of life and they will bring us into eternal life. How do we do that? The bread of life, the way we believe in it, is not something we do with our heads. It's not like believing two and two is four. That's, that's a mental exercise. Believing in Jesus is an is exercise of the heart. It's just like the Israelites trusting that God loves us. That he is taking care of us, even when we're struggling, even when we feel like we're starving, even when we're like alive and say, I can't do it anymore. We need to trust that we can turn it over to the Lord and that he will be taking care of us. The Lord knows that life is hard. He knows it. Which is why he gave us the Eucharist that we will receive today. The very bread of life. He says that I will sustain you. He reminds you that this is the Lord Himself. In a few chapters, or a few verses later in John's Gospel, beyond what we read today, He tells them, they say, well, how can we eat your flesh? And He says, not only do you have to eat my flesh, you have to chew on it and gnaw on it. He actually accelerates the language up even higher to make us realize He's not talking figuratively. He says, we must consume this flesh, which is the Eucharist that we will receive today, to help us sustain us. To heal us when we murmur and talk against God when we're not so thankful for what we're doing. The Eucharist is there for you and us. So, coming back to my final day, I truly believe and I truly pray that my final day will be to come to who God has offered. Just like the in my stories I told you, I pray that my final day is surrounded by family and friends and the beating of the gospel and the beating of the Eucharist. If I could take one final meal, that's what I would like to have. So I ask you to consider what should your final meal be. I hope for you that it is like me, and I hope that it's bread of life.
stand, and together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. Take it for granted. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 